friends in Christ, may the light of Christ shine within you this day and every day, knowing the promise and hope of his salvation. Amen. In southeastern New Mexico, there is a United States National Park by the name Carlsbad Caverns. I'm sure many of you have heard of Carlsbad Caverns. Perhaps some of you have even had the opportunity to visit Carlsbad Caverns. While there are many caverns, the main attraction happens to be Carlsbad Caverns. Down you go 750 feet below the ground. Up until not too long ago, you would have to go down by trail. Now they have elevators. But each of those trails are lit along the way. There's a little bit of light, and they allow you to bring flashlights, things like that. Well, personally, I have not been there. Carla told me that as she, when she was a little girl, that as they went on the guided tour, there was one portion where they turned out all the lights. They said, turn off your cell phones, turn off your flashlights. And 750 feet below the ground, there was no light at all. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine being 750 feet below the ground in complete and utter darkness? You could not even see your hand in front of your face even if you waved it. They said to stay still because you were more than likely going to run into someone else if you didn't. We can't hardly imagine that though, can we? We're pretty used to the light around us. We are people of the light, not used in the same metaphor as Paul was using it today, but we are people who are used to the light. Think about it. You turn off the lights at night as you prepare to go to bed. As you turn off the lights in your house, you walk past your microwave or your stove, and you see the glow, that green glow of the clock. As you walk past your computer, you see the glow of the lights on the computer flashing back and forth. As you go into your bedroom, you notice the glow of your alarm clock. We constantly have lights, and even if we were to turn off all those lights around us, think about it. The street lights outside, the cars that pass with their headlights, you would still have at least a small glow of light. Now just imagine for a minute, going back 2,000 years. Let's step back in time a minute and imagine we did not have all these modern conveniences. We don't have the alarm clocks or the glow of a cell phone or computer. All we have at night is the glow of the moon and the stars, perhaps a candle to share among our family. When that candle goes out, it is utter and complete darkness Maybe just a small glow from the moon and stars. But on a cloudy night, no glow at all. This is why travelers, whether or not they were weary, would stop at night. For they had no light to see. This is why families would go out and sleep in the pastures with their animals. Because there was fear that a thief or a robber could come and steal their animals. Because night was a time of darkness. A co time where there was cover. In the Old Testament, and even in the New Testament, this sin is often compared to darkness. And it makes sense, doesn't it? Because even if we didn't go back 2,000 years, we oftentimes attribute, attribute nefarious acts, evil things, to darkness, don't we? Think about it. How often are we surprised when we hear about a mugging at night compared to a mugging during the day? there's much greater surprise that someone would have the audacity to do so in the light of day. Or a bank robber who hides out in the, during the night. They do their evil at night. And when you think about it, even we, even if we are not Christians, see how darkness still plays a role in cover. Now Paul, in our epistle lesson for today from Ephesians 5, if you'd like to follow along, you're welcome, starting at verse 8. He actually goes, goes a step further. And he says that our sin is the darkness in our lives. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of the light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Darkness is sin. In Scripture around us, we see how evil is done in darkness, in cover of night, in shadows. But in the lightness, in the light, we see the things that are pleasing to God. Goodness, righteousness, His gifts to us. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Many of us are familiar with that concept of Christ because we hear every Christmas... John's comparison of Jesus when he calls him in John chapter 1, he is the true light. 
The true light has come down from heaven to shine in our hearts. That true light has pierced the, our world darkened by sin and shown us the hope of salvation. That true light has shown in our hearts to give us the salvation that is promised to us when we will join our Lord in heaven. But there's another aspect to that light, isn't there? When we look at that light of Christ, we, we know that there's more than just that salvation aspect. If only that was the case. But isn't there another aspect that comes into play? In old detective movies, they used to bring in a witness or a, someone they were going to interrogate, and they would turn off the lights in the room. And then they would turn on one single light. And that bulb would shine so brightly on the person's face, his or her face, that they would squint and they would as they were answering the questions, they could hardly see the interrogators. That's another aspect of light that we actually see, though. Maybe not in such a way in Christ, but that light that pierces the darkness and reveals our sin. That cuts through the shadows of, in the depths that we try to hide in and opens up to our eyes to see the shape that we're in. Think about it. This light can be overwhelming. This brilliance can, can overwhelm us so much that we try to hide. But many people, they hide from this light because they have things that they've buried, that they've covered over. They've put them into the shadows. They've hidden them away. They've made excuses for themselves and said, well, if I don't talk about it, no one will know. And they hide because they are ashamed of their sinfulness. They hide away and bury it down as deep as they can for days, weeks, months, years. And in the cover of darkness, they try to slink into those shadows where the light cannot reach them. But it's not just people outside the church. It's not pe just people in the church. But how many of us try to hide in the shadows? How many of us try to hide our sins and put them deep? Dive down because we're ashamed to even look at them ourselves. How many of us bury our sins so deep and just wish that no light would ever shine upon them? We know, though, that's a lie. It's a lie to ourselves, it's a lie to God to try to hide our sins. We know that He can see into our hearts, He is the light. In 1 John chapter 1, <clears throat> John writes, God is light. In Him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with Him, yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light as He is the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus His Son purifies us from all sin. But so often we try to hide we try to put these things away because we want to put on our best front. We do good deeds so that no one will check into those shadows. We cover these things over. And we walk a big game. But in truth, we know that burden. We know the weight that we bear as we try to hide those sins away. Sins that are years, maybe even decades old. But there's one who sees. Christ Jesus who sees so brightly into our hearts. For He is the light of the world who has pierced that darkness. He is the light of the world who has shined into our hearts. And He sees our sinfulness. Our Father is not blinded by our tricks and our games. Our Father is not blinded by our practices of, of hiding these things. He sees them. Now Satan, on the other hand, he tries to lead us to these lies that that we can hide something from God. He tries to encourage us to hide these things because He knows that when we hide these things, that we attempt to bear these burdens on our own. Satan knows full well that if we try to bear these burdens on our own, that we will fail. He knows full well that as we try to hide these things, that we grow weak from trying to bear the weight. But he keeps whispering in our ear, God can't love someone like you. He whispers, the sin you committed, that's unforgivable. He whispers to us, you're worthless. Who could love you? Those are the lies of Satan. 
Because He wants us to try and bear our sins on our own. He wants us to try to bear that weight and carry them through, and He knows we cannot. He knows that that weight is too much for any one person to bear. That there is no person on this earth that could bear our weight. And so in the darkest day of history, in the darkest day of the world, Christ Jesus died on the cross. He bled and died and so that we might have the light. The light that pierces the lies of Satan's. The light that pierces the darkness of death and sin. When Jesus said, I am the light of the world, He was giving us that promise that there was no sin too great. There was no sin that He would shake His head and disgust at and walk away from us because nothing could do that. Nothing could push our Lord from us because of His great love. And His love, His love never stops. In fact, Jeremiah refers to it as eternal. Now, we don't completely understand that phrase eternal because it's well beyond our understanding. But, but that, that love eternal is the love that was willing to sacrifice Himself for us. That love eternal was the light that was willing to go to the cross to fa- face and suffer the torture of death so that we may walk refreshed and made new, renewed in His light, Renewed in His life. That light. That light is what Jesus was promising to all people. Not only us as believers who bear the weight of sin, but those who are outside of the church because we know full well how many people bear the burden of sin. There is not one person who doesn't. The difference is they have not seen the light. They have not had that brilliant light shine in their lives, revealing their sinfulness, but also revealing the forgiveness of our Lord. And so our Lord, He shines through us. He shines through us that we may be a light to others. He shines through us that we may share our faith with those who have not seen the light, with those who have been blinded by their sin, because we know how dark that sin and death is. All of us, before we were baptized and brought into the family of the Lord, we stumbled around in that murky death of sin. And maybe some of us still stumble around to this day. Maybe some of us still at times get caught up in that murkiness of sin. But Jesus says, I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world and when we come to Him, Let me take that back. When He comes to us, we see that there is nothing that can be hidden and there is nothing that cannot be forgiven. And so I don't know if you are bearing a sin right now, if you're carrying a sin with you right now. Many of us do, though. Many of us walk around each and every day thinking, I need to hide this sin away. But if you are, our Lord invites you to turn it over to Him. Walk as a child of of the light. Know His goodness and know His mercy. Know His promise of salvation. And know with full assurance that there is no sin too great for our Lord. There is no sin that disgusts Him. There is no sin that He is so ashamed of that He that He turns His back. But in again and again, as He says, "I am the light of the world," He invites us to Him. Paul. Right at the end of our text today, I thought this was probably the statement he wakes. Kind of gets right at where some of us may be at times. Wake up, O sleeper. Rise from the dead. And Christ will shine upon you. Wake up. Know the light of our Savior. Know the promise of salvation and know that it is yours. Amen. Please pray with me. O Christ, you have said that you are the light of the world. We pray that this day and every day we may know this light and we may know that our sins have been forgiven. Lord, lead us and direct us to share this light with others that they may know the promise of salvation, that they may not wither and die in the darkness of this world, but may know the pure light of grace, the pure light of salvation, and pure light of assurance that one day we will be with you, that we will join you in your presence forever where there will be no need for sun 
There will be no need for lights because you will shine with the brilliance of your glory. Until that day, Lord, may you lead us and guide us. May you direct us. May your word be a light to our feet and a lamp to our path. This we pray through Jesus' holy name. Amen.